Uh-oh. <clears throat> hey guys, I'm Joshua Ross, your host, and this is live at the podium. Uh, first off, I want to apologize for the late start. We have some unforeseen technical difficulties, and it took us a little time to get work through. But hey, we're here now, and that's all that matters. With us today is Hall of Fame quarterback Mike Brown, one of the greats to ever do it. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing wonderful. And yourself? Doing pretty good, man. The first thing I want to get 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 through is: Are you the real Mike? Because there's another guy in Helsinki that says he is. <laughs> Uh, but we got to get that straightened out, man. Are you the real Mike? This is the real Mike Brown <laughs> with the suit. Man, how did that get started up? How, how, what, was his, what was going on in Jabari's mind with that? Uh, he's just a fun guy, and it was just, uh, I guess, a little inside joke, you know, trying to catch up with me, trying to find me, and then uh, just kind of blew up when we started doing it on Facebook, going back and forth with each other. It's a pretty fun time. So can you can you honestly say that he's only doing it because he's trying to ride a coattails of success? Ooh, that's tough. Nah, Jabari has his own success in his own right. You know, he's done some pretty good stuff when he was in Poland, uh, also in Finland as well, where he started his career and where he's back at now, and he's doing great stuff there um, with mm-hmm. these City Giants as well. So I, you know, I tip my hat off to him. Right, he's a good guy. He's one. He's one of the good ones. Uh, he is his own man. He is the real Jabari Harris, not Mike Brown. Yeah. So. Uh, so man, let's get into your career a little bit. Uh, you've definitely you've had one of the longest and most successful careers of any import so far. How how did you how did you get that started? Uh, you finished your career in college at St. Mary's, correct? That's correct. Which is in Canada. In Canada, yeah. um, are they affiliated with the Canadian leagues, or is it or is, is Simon Francis the only Canadian team to be in the NCAA? That is true. Yep, Simon. Okay. Is in the NCAA. Okay, so. <laughs> Or within, what's the league name in Canada that St. Mary's is involved in? At, at the time, it was called the CIS. Um, now it's called mm-hmm. U Sports, which is equivalent to like an NCAA. You okay. Know, there's no difference. Everything is like pretty much the same division. So it's all Division One. Um, and in Quebec, they have a similar to a JUCO system. Um, they call mm-hmm. it college. Um, it's called a CJET. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. That was, that was more from my personal idea because, I mean, I was playing in Maine. I had a lot of guys that were from Canada, so I wasn't quite yep. sure if how, how it all worked out. Uh, so I, was, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask that question. Now, going from St. Mary's, how did you get to Europe from there? Well, I actually was in Europe before I went to St. Mary's. Uh, I played in the CFL before I went to St. Mary's as well. Okay. Um, but I started out in, in uh, Werner Oda, which is in uh, East Germany. Uh, mm-hmm. It was about maybe 30 kilometers, 30 clicks away from Braunschweig. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where it started. You know, uh, I went there, played a few games with them, um, had a great time. Uh, they they fed me up on some beer. Uh, it's a lot. It's a it's very much like a workers' town. Uh, but mm-hmm. the guys there were wonderful. The team treated me great. Um, and it just so happened I didn't go back. I, I started going up in levels, and you know they were there. I, I saw some of the uh, management, some of the players in uh, 2011 in Austria at the World Championships. Uh, we were going mm-hmm. up the stadium to to grab our medals. And uh, a couple guys grabbed me, and I'm looking like, oh, uh-oh, somebody's about to kidnap me or something. And it's the guys from Van Nigeroda, you know, hugging me and just congratulating me. And it was it was a great time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, uh, one one little note for the viewers. I was actually supposed to start my career in the same spot you had in 2015 yep. with uh, Jan's mama. Uh, supposed to bring me in. Th- unfortunately, things fell through, but that's actually how we first got first got together was Jan's t- having me talk to you about them. Right. Yeah, he's a great dude. You know, they they run a great organization over there. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Um, to so going from there, what was the next step uh, after that first season? Um, from there, it was just you know just continuing to go up in levels, continuing to better myself, uh, not only as a player but as a person, uh, academically as well. Uh, I was still doing university. Uh, I ended up going mm-hmm. to, to Switzerland um, for a couple of years, and for the most part, I enjoyed most of my time there. Um, made a lot of lifelong friends that I, I'm still in contact with now to this day. I still, you know, chat with them. We when I when I come out to Europe, we visit. Um, I've had a couple of the guys come over this way to to Canada to visit me, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, that, that's all I got to say really about Switzerland. 
So, uh, and then from Switzerland, that's when you start getting into the top leagues, correct? Yeah. Well, when I was in Switzerland, it was the top league as well. Um, and got to play against, you know, some, some pretty good guys, uh, and then great coaches, you know, coach Dave Ritchie was out there, a former CFL great. Um, and then from there, it was the, um, U S national team. I played arena, uh, had another stint in the CFL with Montreal. And then, mm-hmm. um, where did I go from there? Um, Marburg, Germany. Uh, with Carlson Dalfkoski. I love that guy. Um, and then my entire Marburg family. They treated me great there. I had a great time with the guys. Um, <clears throat> my first year was a little, I'm not going to say rough, but it was a little change, and, you know, com- compared to what they used to do on the offensive side of the ball. Um, they brought mm-hmm. in Marcel Booth, who's a, a great, you know, former GFL player, um, receiver. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we worked with the offense and, and got it to where we got to the playoffs. You know, we had great stats, a lot of wins. I think we started off 7-0 and um, that mm-hmm. season, which nobody expected. And uh, we just mm-hmm. kept it rolling from there. Mm-hmm. So, from Marburg, the next step was Gdynia, correct? Yeah, from Marburg, it was Gdynia. Yeah. Um, that happened. Mm-hmm. I had a, a, a job opportunity in uh, in the west of Canada. Uh, mm-hmm. Pretty lucrative business in the oil fields, and uh, some things went through. Um, they had to put a, a, a hold on the hiring. And got down to the decision of, you know, do I do I hold out for this and leave or do I just continue on and, you know, talk with my wife and it's just like, you know what, we're not going to hold our lives for something like this. Let's just keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, so from, from my time in Gdynia, um, there being the underdog with the team, nobody thought we would do anything. And mm-hmm. saw how that turned out to uh, yep. get the call to go up to Helsinki um, and, and turning that place around for that year. And staying there for that that second year, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, with with in addition to the 2017 uh, Lazio Marines, you have played in I think it's five different top le- top leagues, including Poland, Finland, Italy, Germany, and Switzerland. What yep. would you say is the biggest difference in competition level between each league? Uh, I would say football IQ, football knowledge, uh, some techniques. Um, mm-hmm. I feel that Germany is a really great league. I feel that um, the Germans have a lot of finesse. They understand the game really well. Um, mm-hmm. But the league itself, the disparity between the top team and the bottom team is, is fairly large. Mm-hmm. Um, when you move over to, to a country like Poland, I found Poland was a very physical league. Mm-hmm. Um, just pounding every game. Every game mm-hmm. is just, you know, you're actually going to war. And then when you get mm-hmm. up to Finland, I think overall, um, from my perspective, I think Finland had maybe the best football. Um, when you get yeah. to the players, the technique, the fundamentals they had, their IQ, the level of play, um, and, the, and the differences in the types of offenses and defenses that, that go throughout the league, um, mm-hmm. along with the, a smaller disparity between the top and the bottom team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, don't have, I don't have the same experience level, obviously, as you do, but playing in Poland where I did, even at – even at the level I was at, and you look at some of the defensive lines, there's a couple of teams, they were 6'2", 6'3", 216 above all the way across the board, and that's a lower level. I can't imagine playing top league. Yeah, Man, well, I don't know. I, come mean, out the- I mean, I think uh, Vodotua Panthers probably had the best D-line we went against, and their guys were half that size. Their guys, you know, 5'7", you know, 220, but just monsters, um, you know. Like, those guys really um, good. Um, uh, yeah, they really do. They really do. I, I, I I can honestly say playing in Poland, I was more sore than I ever was in college. The, I the beatings yeah, I took. I'd say the same. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so if you had to make a case between the five, those five countries, obviously with German, Germany having the most experience and having probably the most established league, if you were to call, say, a national game between any of those five teams, who's got the upper hand? That's tough. That's tough. Um, Germany has the most population, you know, so they have the biggest yeah. pool of talent to choose from. Um, they also have mm-hmm. the most, um, you know, Western culture there as well, you know, with a lot of imports and or, or Americans and Canadians coming in for work or for whatever, mm-hmm. you know, you have. Um, I think Germany and Finland would be actually a pretty good competition. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see those those teams play against each other from my mm-hmm. own personal gratification 
Yes. I, I, that'd be actually be a really good game to see. It really would be. Um, if you were if you were in a position to give tips to any of the leaders of let's say the other three countries, Italy, Poland, or Switzerland, what would your recommendations be to help improve those countries with their game and their programs? How to how to improve them? That's a really good question. Um, I think you just need to uh, each country. I think needs to evaluate their demographics, their economy, and kind of see where they lack the most in. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe look at some of the other countries and see what they do that makes them successful doesn't necessarily mean that you can incorporate that into your country and you're going to be successful as well. But maybe there are some ideas there or some tactics there that could be used uh, to further the leagues. Speaking on national team experience, uh, you did have the opportunity, as you mentioned before, to participate in USA football or the U.S. national team. Uh, Obviously, there's two different organizations, so it may not be USA football. But uh, what was your main takeaway from that experience? Well, I was on both. I was on the USA football, the the USA national team, and then I was also on the USA Eagles, which is um, now, I, I guess, called the US national team for the uh, World Games in Poland. Um, mm-hmm. And I had a great experience on both ends uh, with the USA football, the national team, um, you know, the camp we had, and then flying over and, and, you know, finishing up camp and having, you know, four games in like, I don't know, I think it was like five days maybe, and Austria was mm-hmm. awesome. You know, a 45-man roster, um, you know, for some European standards, that's a pretty big roster. But when you're playing in a tournament like that, it was tough. It was hard. You know, like if anybody went down, like you felt the effect. Um, for me, it was mm-hmm. kind of – it was it was really fun. Um, I didn't get to specialize in anything. I was playing quarterback. I played receiver. I did returns, some running back stuff. had a couple special mm-hmm. plays. So it was really fun to, to be involved in, you know, so many different aspects of the game and, and phases. Um and then it was the same also on the, the USA Eagles. Um, I played with them twice. We played against the French national team, and then I also played against them or played with them when we played, um, I think it was France or Italy another time. And it was uh, – that's Chico, you guys here. Chico, come here. He's trying to protect me. Come here. Um, but we had a good time there. I played receiver. I did some quarterback as well and, you know, got to show some skills and some talents on both ends. Mm-hmm. So it was it was a great experience. Meet you know great coaches. You know you meet a lot of great guys. Some of those guys are you know some of my best friends today. Cody Smith being one of them. You know we mean mm-hmm. Cody talk on a daily basis. Well, almost a daily basis about everything. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and some other guys as well. So my experience there was amazing with with both ends, both teams. Now, as being a former participant of both teams, what would be something you'd like to see improved upon for those organizations? Not even just those organizations. I think just football in general. You know, there needs to be um, a governing body, a meaning singular Mm -hmm. one, um, that actually not only takes care of teams, which is what has been going on lately, but also taking care of players. Um, There's nothing Mm -hmm. out there right now that is taking care of players. If players have any needs or any concerns or going through any situations or circumstances, there's nothing there to help set those players up um, or put them in a better situation. Um, it seems mm-hmm. more so that things are there to hinder players or kind of uh, scale back what players can do in certain situations. And with your vast experience that you've had over in Europe uh, and also in Canada, what are your feelings towards the IFAF issues that we've had so far? Um, any improvements you'd like to see? Anything you'd like to see from either side to work towards a, a su- successful resolution to this issue? Well, it would be pretty much what I just said, just making something where it's structured enough for not just teams, but also players. Right now, there's so many things going on um, in the football world that, in in Europe especially, where it could further the game, but we can't because there's no head. You know, there's no Mm -hmm. leader for, for, you know, international American football, and that, that hurts us, you know, not just the teams, not just the football community, but also the players, you know, like there's nothing there to, to help the players. There's nothing there to help the players, to help the teams to, you know, go further, you know, and make this something bigger than what it is right now. And this is, I think, where most people want. They, you know, they want to be part of something that's bigger than themselves. Um, mm-hmm. But right now that's being hindered a bit. Mm-hmm. 
Now, before we get on to the next, the next tip, tip back, let me reset. Get on to the next topic. Uh, I want to show you a couple of things. You got a couple of fans out here that want to that want to show them a little bit. Let's see the first comment to come up. Can you read that? Yep. How about? How about? I think I need to say you're the, one of the greatest players I've ever seen. This kid is 17 years old, guys, and like just a monster playing with a broken thumb. Just I mean, this kid always in practice, always doing what he needs to do. He's like a sponge, just absorbs everything. Thank you, Hobbit. I appreciate that, though, man. I wish you the best. Now, where's where's he playing at right now? I was actually playing in Lazio. All right. Yeah. All right, man. He's, he's, been, he's, he's on the the under nineteen national team as well. Um, just a great kid, smart kid as well. You know, he's a he's a guy that I'm gonna help personally. You know, get somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's that kind of guy. Hey, how about hey? Now that you got Mike Brown supporting you, we're all watching you. Yeah, no pressure, Abba. No pressure. Abba would say this. No pressure. I got swag. I'm cool. <laughs> That's Abba right there. Uh, one of the. All right, Abba. We're watching. All right, you got one more. We got to show you. Okay. Chris Haas. He's talking about I'm a legend. He's a legend. Chris Haas has been around forever. But thank you, Chris. I really appreciate that, man. Keep shooting those shots, too. So, to build on what we had just spoken about, both USA, USF, AF football, and then with the IFAF issues, um, with with events across across the board in Europe and CFL and even some NFL issues, um, what would be – what would be something that you would discuss with current and new imports or any athletes entering into this game at a professional level? What would your recommendations be to them on how to one, protect their own interest and two, how to always find the best situation for them? That's a, that's a really good topic. First and foremost, first and foremost, trust yourself. Um, you're going to have, you know, red flags going into a situation. Listen to those red flags and trust your gut. I mean, there's going to be certain situations where obviously you're not sure of what's going to happen, but really evaluate, really write down the pros and cons list, really know what you want and how to get what you want and leverage that. Um, and then when you get to a place, if you choose to take it, set those boundaries early. You know, go through proper protocol. Make sure you're doing things the right way. Make sure you're communicating effectively. Um, and try different ways, you know, do, uh, you know, through an email, through a Facebook message, um, have a personal meeting. And then from that point on, if things aren't going how you feel they should go or aren't working out in your best interest or in your favor, then you just got to cut your ties, you know, and you just got to let them know like, Hey, look guys, like, you know, I, I, sorry, this came to this, but you know, I told you how it was going to be and now I got to go. Okay. Yeah, and that's something I would add on to that is if you don't feel right about the situation and if, some, if something just doesn't feel right, mm-hmm. it's okay to say no. It's okay. Absolutely. I've had my own experiences uh, within, within my career that the, the things just didn't fall the way they were supposed to fall. And it, it's on both sides. It's both organizations and players. It happens to, um, in, every, in every possible way. But if something just doesn't feel right, it's okay to say no. It's yep. okay to say no. Absolutely. And I think also, you know, talk to any of that and ask for an honest opinion, you know, and, and on the guys on the other end, you know, be honest, be upfront. I think that's kind of an issue um, that we're going through in the, in the European football community is where, you know, guys kind of want to not say too much or, you know, quote unquote, not get on somebody's bad side. But I mean, like, we got to all be honest, man. We got to be upfront, and be truthful about it. We got to look out for each other. Mm-hmm. You know, again, there's nothing there to help us as players right now. So we got to help each other. And, and be just straight up, you know, if you don't like the situation, you know, be, be objective and say, you know, this was my situation. This is how I felt about it, but it may be different for somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had situations where I've been in great situations. I absolutely loved it. I would vouch for whatever team or club or organization it was. And somebody else didn't have the same um, opportunity or the same perspective or the same situation that I had. And they thought it was shitty, you know, but, I was up front and honest with my situation. 
Yeah. We're closing closing on that. I just want to say that in your in, in American football across the world, we've got great organizations. We've got organizations that aren't quite to the level they need to be, and we've got players on that side as well. We've got guys that give everything they've got. They may not necessarily be, always be the greatest talent, but they're going to give you everything you got. And then we got guys that give imports a horrible name. They get to a place, they don't follow through on their objectives. They don't. No, uh, they're out. They're out partying. They're out doing such and such, and giving organizations a bad name. So it really, the the go back even back to what we talk about USA football and IFA. Of, we have to have a central organization that where organiza- uh teams and programs and athletes can come together and create one central fundamental, for lack of a better term, rule book. Uh, right. So something that everybody can follow abide and help this game grow because we've. We we play the best sport in the world. Uh, sorry to got soccer fans or football fans, uh, cricket, baseball. American football is the best sport because there's not a sport in the world where you can go out and learn the values that we learn because of the, the game we play. And it it, it it's it hurts when you have individuals in our game from all levels, from every every spot uh, that hold us back. Um, it's we're all here together. We're all in this together. The import community is tiny. The football community overall is tiny, and we're all here for each. Let, let's let, let's 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 grow this game the way it needs to be. Exactly. Um, your buddy Sean Shelton says you need to shave. Uh, the way I, what I would say that that is, man, let it grow. Let, let the beard let, let the beard be beautiful. I, I'm I'm upset because I, I I went go tea yesterday, and as soon as I did it, I'm upset. It broke my heart. Beard gang. I think Sean's a little upset because he can't grow one. That's all right, Sean. I'll share some of mine with you. I still got that jersey coming to you, by the way. It's a thin air nostril that's holding it back. Yeah, that's what it is. Need some more humidity. So the, last, <laughs> the last thing to discuss, man, yep. is your, your, your career going forward. Yep. What's what, what in store? I got a whole lot of shit in store, man. I have so many things I want to do and so many things I'm interested in doing. Um, first off, I have an athlete development company here in Canada that I, I'm getting going. Um, I obviously specialize in quarterbacks and also receivers. Um, but just training, you know, football players and other athletes, I just want to be more athletic, be more dynamic, be faster, um, be more explosive, um, is what I'll be doing here in the Atlantic region in Canada. Um, mm-hmm. And I, you know, this is just something I love doing. You know, I do it wherever I'm at, whatever club I'm with, wherever I'm going. This is something I enjoy doing. I enjoy teaching. And that's another thing I'll be doing. Uh, I'll be teaching leadership at a university, um, Mm -hmm. which is never thought I'd be a teacher or doing anything like that. But I feel that leadership is something that is kind of on the decline in a sense, you know, in the the generations coming up. Uh, We don't have enough leaders, you know, in the business world or just as people in general. Um, And I think that's really important, you know, to, to have confidence in yourself. And, and being able to speak to others and, you know, being able to do things the right way and just standing up for not only yourself but other people in the right situations. So mm-hmm. those are two things I'll be doing for sure. And um, coming home to my wife, coming home to Chico is, like, amazing. Chico came woke me up this morning just looking at my face, just ready to play. And, you know, there's no feeling like that. And, and my son, he's coming up here to spend the whole summer with us. And, you know, he wants to go camping and go hunting and do all the boy stuff. So, like, this is just a you know a great time you know the last you know he's he's seven he'll be eight in July you know so for his his lifespan you know I haven't been able to be there um, long enough to be able to do things like this with him you know I go see him you know once or twice a year for an extended period of time and when I'm there I'm just Santa Claus you know and you know we have a great bond we FaceTime very often um, you know he knows where I'm at what I'm what's going on what you know what's happening and he was supposed to come out to Italy. Um, things didn't go too well, so now he's just going to spend the entire summer here um, in Canada. Mm-hmm. And for me, this is like you know, great. You know, I've had my time. I've I've lived my dream. Um, you know, and and I feel like I've given back to the game, um, and I'm going to continue to give back to the game. But now it's time to pour all my experiences into my son. You know, and, and share that stuff with my wife as well. So, hey, man, uh, I know I know you you've already had a successful career. But the best is still ahead of you. Yeah, uh, it's probably got a trick or two up my sleeve as well. Are you gonna get you a uh, you gonna get you a moose pass this year? I know in Maine they give out a few, 
Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna work your magic and get one. Oh man, oh man, I'm not gonna comment on any of that right now. <laughs> so. uh, that's so funny. All right, so what? Then now, what we typically do with our with our interviews is we spend yep. the last few minutes uh, doing a little Q and A, and we got a couple guys here that have a couple questions for you. Um, we'll go first with Will Powell. Uh, first, he he says he's upset because he can't grow a beard. Well, I. Better Talking to two guys that can, so we don't understand the pain. Yeah. He's got to do something. He's, he lives in the Dakotas. you got to have a beard if you live in the Dakotas. That's absolutely true. There's no difference. Right. Might as well say you're Canadian, Will. I mean, you're up here with me. Might as well. Might as well. There's this question. Okay. Um, so you think the leadership or lack thereof in a generation issue is millennials? It's a fairly good question. I don't think it's necessarily millennials. I think it's just people in general. I mean, there's older generations now that still don't have leadership, you know, um, and leadership comes in so many different forms and so many different facets. It's not just a verbal leader or a leader by example or anything like that, but I mean, just setting a precedence in so many different areas of, of our lives to help not only ourselves, but obviously help other people. I mean, 